Hello people, I'm Javi Kawai, joined by Achara Kirk. Hello. We're continuing on with Sacred Games Season 2, this time Episode 4. Now, I'm gonna say some stuff, just in case it needs to be said. Uh, what you're seeing on YouTube is gonna be a cut down of 10 minutes of the episode, because we can't show the whole thing. But if you wanna watch it along with us, you can join our Patreon and you can see our entire reaction. Only thing there is you'll have to open up Netflix side by side, so it's like you're watching it with us. Episode 2 is still missing from YouTube as of recording this, but again, that's also on our Patreon. You can see both the cut down and the watch along there. So uh, here we go, continuing on with episode 4. <laughs> Oh God! Oh shit, he kidnapped him? What? Why the hell? I thought that he was gonna do some sort of nasty trick like give him a pork sandwich and then be like ha that's probably what it was I made you do it has he only just kidnapped him because of being angry or if there's something oh else? I mean there's some kind of deep-seated uh, anti-islamic like Islamophobic that's well yeah that's been going to. on for like but he's his, 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 his runs a lot deeper obviously Whew. what a way to start an episode Oh. Well, hello there. We're finally in the same room. Tere malik ne tere ko isse kaake nahi bheja ki pehle ye sab aaye ki izzat karna. Oh man. Deal karne ka hai. Wafadari ka. He's just setting up for a world of hurt. Ain't that the truth? I don't know. I Analyzing is not enough. Participate karo. Gain the trust. This is the best chance we all have. Hmm. Get us a meeting with Shahid Khan. Wow. That's a that's a big ask. He says it like nothing. Yeah, he's like, just uh, get a meeting, you know, no yeah. big deal. Or do no. That's the bar of the calica. I'm glad they showed that because yeah. I would not have connected that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Sardar, come on. Hello, Makran sir. What Jojo's house was worth? Ninety crores, eighty-six lakh, seventy-six thousand. Ninety crores, eighty-six lakh, seventy-six thousand. Take it. What are you doing? Tell me, sir. Come on. Hmm. Look, we are ready to give you material. In five crores. Maybe Shahid Khan doesn't negotiate. He's Muslim. Oh, he's Muslim. Was that there because we made an assumption about him? Is that what that's about? Please have no response. Yeah, maybe. Because he's like a really sadistic guy. Like, it must be weird <laughs> to do that. Well, how hard he is on the yeah. villains, you'd think otherwise. Yeah. Sir, sir! Response Agya. There we go. Password protector. Oh, shit. It's time to hack, sir. 
कुछ गलत होने पे वो लोग अलर्ट हो सकते हैं और हम लोग अपना मौका गवा सकते हैं डैंग इट कुछ लोग इस्तेमाल करते हैं और बाकी सब हटा देंगे इस केस से मुझे अगर ऐसा करेंगे तो प्लीज बाद में बात करते She don't want to do. Oh my god. You will teach me what to do. Ask me. Oh no. Make her happy. Make her happy. I'm pregnant. Do you want to go deeper? Cool. What is the answer? Yes. Oh. Go ahead, take the red pill. I feel like all this is going to come back to bite him at some point. Matlo Sardar ji. Bol raha hu mat lo. He's going to do it though. Oh no, I don't think. Oh no. He definitely oh, took hey. it. Kab pata chala? Aur kya khel lagta hai apko? Ab thak gaya hai apne aap se. Marta main andar se. Aur gwar hone ka saal hai kadi is नहीं नहीं तू तू नहीं तुझे कहीं सुख नहीं मला गुरु जी ने बोला अपना नया जन्म होएगा बस ठीक टाइम पर ठीक रास्ता लेना पड़ेगा मैंने दास्तान गोई का प्रोग्राम रखा है दुबई में शायद आएगा मोहम्मद बिन कासिम यानी इस्लामी तारीख का बर सगीर का अहम The reveal of him was so casual. <laughs> I was like, wait. Is he there? Cuz yeah. cuz normally like it's, you know, built up. Mhm. Ab unke hath mein bomb ka nahi. Apni life ka button tha. Shayad koda hai to mat zindagi jiyega. Mast. Lekin hamesha yaad hai us sahab ka gulam aur usko chhod gaya. To jaisa guru ji bole, balidan, naya janam, bhagwan. टाइम पे अपन सिर्फ अपना नहीं सबका किस्मत बदलते सरदार जी साइद का आपका आशा। 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 <gasps> He did it. वाह इंतजार कर रहे जमीला बोल रही है तेरे को गाय तुम से छुट्टी चाहिए सरप्राइज आप आजकल याद नहीं करते हो तो मैं खुद ही आ गई क्यों आई तू क्यों आई मतलब सामान पान जाए आज रात निकलना पड़ेगा ही नोस बाबू बोला सामान बांधने का तो सामान बांधने का 
like maybe pack faster or like just leave right now. That's, that's an idea. Did you catch it out of the corner of your eye? Come on now. You go. Shut up. Right by the window, dude. Yeah, that's right. Peace out, mofos. बुलाना चौदह सौ अठानवे में वास्को दगामा इंडिया आया कब्जा करने एक बनिया था मांडवी का कांजी माला इधर पोर्चुगल निकला तो रास्ता भटक गया लेकिन फिर उन्हें गुजराती व्यापारी मिला केन्या की मालिंदी पोर्ट में मालम मांडवी का रहने वाला और वो सब यहाँ पहुंचे 1498 में गैब्रिल नाम की शिप पर मालिन जी से मालम के साथ मालम वास्को डगा मालम सो यू इट्स ऑस्ट्रेलिया का चांसेस आखिरी मौका Look at my arms. Can you attest that those are goosebumps? Mm -hmm. Are those goosebumps? Oh my god. I think that might have been my favorite episode so yeah. far. Well, I mean, it, it's progressively getting better. Yeah. I, I think. I mean, as you start to bring everything together, a little bit less confusion. Yeah. The ideas start to coalesce into like a, a clear thought and idea. And you're like, oh, I see where this yeah. is going. Connections are being yeah. made. Yeah, right. It's so exciting. The first thing I want to mention is Saeed Ali Khan. I just love his acting. Oh my God. His acting was so powerful throughout this episode. I mean, obviously, now Azun and Siddiqui always goes without saying. Yeah. But Saif Ali Khan, because I was less familiar with his work before Sacred Games, I mean, Sacred Games is the most I've watched him. In, yeah, in I mean, all, we watched truth. him in Go Go Are Gone, but right. that was a completely different role. Right. You know, that was this like, crazy over the top comedy, and his acting here is so nuanced. Right. I mean, obviously, he's, he's also working with directors that prefer that acting style. Right. But I think it's awesome. I mean, it feels so real. Everywhere he went in this episode, even with the flashbacks and whatnot, where he's dealing with his, his uh, former wife getting an abortion. Yeah. And just like all the, the rage inside that he's trying to deal with. The part at the table, though, when he's confronting his ex-wife and she finds out she's pregnant, like everything in his eyes was so real. I mean, that between the two of them, yeah. that scene, it was like being a fly on the wall and watching that go down because that was so heavy. I nearly cried for him because like just the whole situation and how awkward that was. Can you imagine like going to a party yeah. And your ex-wife is there with her new guy. Yeah. And then she's pregnant as well. Something that you've wanted with her. And now she seems happy with a dude who she's only been with for six months. Like, yeah. what the hell? He, he got, uh, he got summered. <laughs> 500 days of summer. Oh, yeah. That was rough, man. Yeah. I was just, I was distraught for him. This is the first episode also where... I didn't feel totally lost. It's all engaging, but this is the first episode where I could actually follow what they were saying and, and, and start pulling it together as well. Right. As opposed to being like, okay, wait, 
where are we? What's going on? Why? Yeah, as opposed to feeling like you're always three steps behind. Exactly. This time you're like, oh, cool. I'm starting to see how things are fitting together and who's who and how this is going to influence what's going to happen right. in the future, maybe. This show, I think, is part of why I wasn't able to appreciate Mission Mongol quite as much. Because it's so real, down to the details. Like, I realized it when they were talking about the bomb with Cho Chang, whatever the guy's name is, the Chinese dude over <laughs> yeah. Skype. When they were having the conversation and they were talking about the specifics of the bomb uh -huh. and the pipes and whatnot, I realized in that moment what was wrong with Mission Mongol for me yesterday, because I'm like, it feels very, I mean, this is obviously not exactly about the show, but like, right. it feels very uh, commercial. Commercial, yeah, glossy, you know, contrived. Very, very, yeah. Very, like, it's, and the part that, that popped into my head was when they restarted the whole computer with that, that huge switch. I'm like, that's going to shut down everything. I'm like, really? And then you see like the Mac OS show up in the background in the reflection. And so anyway, the, all this to say that I really love the authenticity that they're bringing to the show. I don't know if it's authentic. Right, but, it's but it feels that way. It feels that way because of the details. Like there's certain, um, I forget where I read this, but there's like certain vernacular and whatnot. I think it was from uh, the guy who wrote uh, the Steve Jobs, the second Steve Jobs I picked that was broken up into three parts. He's a famous writer, also wrote West Wing. Aaron Sorkin. Aaron Sorkin. He mentioned something about how there's certain lingo that your characters will speak that you that your audience may not understand, <clears throat> but its presence will make it feel authentic. Yeah, very and, true. And that's what's happening here is like there are certain things being spoken about where I'm like, I don't understand it, but they clearly understand it, and that makes it feel real and authentic. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the writing in that regard. I like the... The shooting and the edit, the, the way, the, basically the way the story is being told, where Gaitonde and Sartage both hit the drug at the same time, and they were both experiencing this revelation at the same time, right. and that intensity that they were going through, like I had no idea where that was going. The acting with Kalki as well in that yeah, scene, that all, was beautiful. All that stuff was just very, very well put together. So I understand why you're saying this is your favorite episode. Cause yeah. like it was just overall a very strong episode. Yeah, and it was also really emotional as well. I liked that the theme, this underlying theme was loneliness because mm -hmm. uh, Sartaj is feeling incredibly lonely and that's why he's really vulnerable and he's, he's going to the ashram and you know, all that stuff with his wife. And then uh, Gaitonde was feeling really lonely. Like I, I felt for him at his birthday party. I mean, I, I feel like I've been in those situations where I'm like, wow, I feel like the loneliest person in the room right now. And it sucks. And they're, they're both at that very kind of vulnerable, vulnerable stage yeah. in, in their lives. And that's really interesting to me. And I also really liked that we got to learn a little bit more about Majid because I don't know, my brain didn't make the connection with his name, right? Because Majid is a very Muslim name. And I guess the whole time I'm watching him beat up these, you know, Muslim guys, it didn't even occur to me that, wow, he's being so awful and so mean and violent towards people of his same religion and he's not being very empathetic as, at all. Whereas Sartaj is the one who's mm -hmm. more empathetic. Yeah. And so that's just like a very interesting dichotomy. Well, you understand right where that there. comes from. It's not just him being bad cop. To me, that speaks to the fact that he is just enraged at the misuse of his religion. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that to me is what that would be about. You're giving all of us a bad name. You're the reason why I can't even get a place to live. True. You know, because of my name. Like, if it wasn't for you guys. And so I can see where he's coming from. Like, right. just that visceral rage. Yeah, I guess I was just watching that and going, oh, wow, maybe he should be more empathetic, but yeah, saying that, I'm like, yeah, I mean, that, that to makes me, sense. That to me speaks to powerful writing because you think it's the surface thing, but it's actually yeah. so much deeper. And you can fill in the gaps if you're like thinking about it intellectually, like, oh, this is what's informing this action. Yeah. It's extremely good writing. It's so good. You know, as opposed to everything just being surface and these like cardboard characters, everyone's very three dimensional. Even if I can't hold on to all the characters, I, I, I feel a sense of three dimensionality to, to all of them. Yeah. And, and like you say, that's just fantastic writing because. Up until this point, I was just like, that guy is just awful. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, oh, okay, well, his actions kind of make sense. And I'm seeing him more as a person right. rather than just the bad cop. Right, his actions are informed by something personal. Going back to that drug-induced thing, that was that was super trippy because like the colors were shifting. Yeah. And the guru behind Gaitonde was like his... 
his the, his image was getting like twisted in such a way I'm like what is going on here are they about to make love is that what's going on like I because he was like touching him and stuff mm -hmm. I was like where is this going but the revelation of Gaitonde in that moment was very powerful because he's like he was admitting feeling lost to that like what I love about this episode is also how it makes you reflect yeah. It makes you think. Well, what I got from that scene was that he realized that actually this whole time he's been trying to run away from his father, right? And his father's legacy. And the fact is, his father is a part of him. It's yeah. like, you can't, you can't deny that. You, your parents are a part of you. And so, you know, it was just this huge, I guess, epiphany mm -hmm. for him. Mm -hmm. And like a huge release as well and then now he's got a new father that's what i felt when um guruji was you know holding him and stroking him it didn't feel sexual to me it felt like nurturing oh okay like he was, okay he that was makes going more sense. like you're gonna be fine you're gonna you're gonna go through this i'm gonna lead you through this and then it was that moment i feel that he became baptized into the whole religion as it were with the water and stuff oh. and, then, and then being born again as guruji's son right you know but that whole bit about how he was running from his father and whatnot and eventually like what you just yeah. expressed that hit home for me i like, had a feeling it might do yeah I'm not going to talk about it, but <laughs> it, it definitely hit home for me, is, is all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. Overall, I very, very much enjoyed this episode. I thought it was powerful. And... Can't wait for the next one. Like, they keep leaving you on cliffhangers, which is yeah. perfect for, like, a binge-worthy show right. like this. Yeah, I mean, I like how it's building up, and each episode is getting progressively better and more intense. Clearer. You know, it's, it's just kind of, like, reeling you in. So it's a slow burn, but it's, like, it's totally. pulling you in deeper and deeper. So, I'll, I, we didn't even talk about the part where they get ambushed at Gaitonu's home. I thought that whole, the way that whole scene was, oh my God. was pretty cool. I was like, I couldn't breathe. And then there I was, you know, cheering on for Gaitonde. And then I had this kind of moment in the middle where I, in my head I was like, hold on a second. Gaitonde is the bad guy, but I'm also like, no, get out of there. Well, I you mean, know? you were rooting for him in a way because... You've watched everything he's gone through. Yeah. And so you know where he's coming from. And the, the fact that the show can make you empathize with someone who is, for all intents and purposes, kind of heinous, mm -hmm. is kind of amazing. Anyways, yeah, loving this so far. You guys, thanks so much for hanging out with us. Uh, be sure to check out Achara Kirk on the social media, as well as the Jabsters. And, uh, <laughs> it keeps changing. The Jabs. Jabsters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. Let us know your feelings in the comments below. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, and vlogs. And if you're watching this on Patreon, thank you so much for being a supporter. I'm Jabby Kuwait. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out.